This is anime of the year material. It's Attack on Titan, Summertime Render. My poor baby. Nobody cared about Summertime Rendering except for me. I cared. Sure, it doesn't belong in Shmeh, but Netflix really killed themselves with their release model of this. And this year, it's gonna be even more, and you'll see why. Honestly, it feels like every year we just get more and more anime to watch. Now that 2024 has started, I think it's about time we go back to 2023 and rank all the anime that I watched. Before we get into this list, I want everyone watching this video to comment the top three anime they watched this year. So let's do things the suspenseful way and start from worst to best. The worst tier. FLCL cringe. This tier is for shows that are just bad, like aggressively bad. These shows literally should not exist. Agretzko season four. This show dropped the ball with its romantic lead so hard that it makes Luke and Leia's first kiss look like poetry. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. Unfortunately, it's gonna be pretty low on the list. The Devil is a part-timer season two. This one was really painful because I liked the original series. The original season of the show was one of the best mwah, beautiful isekai you could have ever asked for. It was a reverse isekai where the devil came back to our world and he started working at McDonald's and he took it really seriously. He was a real American hero, he's working at McDonald's. And of course, for season two, as you do, take the female antagonist who is the hero of the world and you give them a baby. Yeah, just give them a baby. Give them a baby, let's do that. Let's just give them a baby. And now it's a slice of life show. And now we're having those episodes where it's like, eh, they're on a not date together. What happened to the cool stuff? What happened to the, the cool fights? And what happened to him like actually doing his job? He literally like takes time off for his job. He's like, hey, so uh, I got a baby now. So I'm gonna need some time off of my job. And the manager is like, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that's fine. Just, Take some time off. All of a sudden, you got a three-year-old kid, but yeah, have fun, take care. Bad show, get out of my face. What's next? Fully Cool Alternative. Uh, I'm just putting this on the list out of moral obligation. Wait, this isn't, this isn't supposed to be Alternative. This is supposed to be uh, Shoe Gaze. Fully Cool is Shoe Gaze. Shoe Dog exist either. A Girl and Her Guard Dog. This show really does not need to exist. It's like the execs sat down and was like, Bonnie, listen, we need a new uh, rom-com show. What you got for me? And the guy's like, uh, how about uh, a mob boss daughter goes to high school and her god is uh, overly protective of her. So he disguised himself as a student. I love it. How old is he? 28. That seems kind of old. And he raised her since she was a kid. Uh, that that seems kind of weird. And they're in love. Christ, Barney, you really got to start using those healthcare benefits. Digimon Ghost Game. This show is only here in this tier because I didn't really have space on my list for a D list. I don't watch shows usually that are bad. I will not, I will just like stop watching them as we will see in our next tier. But this one, it was just disappointing to me. They set up a lot of cool things that they just did not decide to follow through on until the last like six episodes. They made a lot of cool forms that are clearly supposed to tie into some kind of plot. And the show just did not turn out as good as it needed to be. So that's why it is down here at the bottom of this list. But it is not the worst show I watched. Fully Cooly grunge. I've never been more hyper aware of my place in the universe than when this show disgraced my field of vision, defecated in my auditory repositories. If there was a Guinness record for creepy, you would hold it. So go on with your me too jokes and egotistical lame explaining. That just proves you're one of the lunatic cringe. And wiped its greasy little paws all over my memories. Studies should be made about how derivative and hollow the soulless husk of an animation project is. Whether it's the criminal offensive animation style, the lackluster callbacks to the original, the downright emotional damage from experiencing the fight scenes, everything just harkens back to a show with a more poignant, creative, and down-to-earth sense of style that this husk of content could ever produce. We're gonna speed through the next tier, which is did not finish bad ending. Now these are shows that I started, obviously, but did not finish and was on the more negative side of things. Magical Girl Destroyers. The show had an interesting concept and some decent animation, but it didn't really feel like it had anything to say with all of its punk attitude and platitudes, so I skipped it. Mashal, Muscles and Magic, or Magic and Muscles. This one just felt too much like One Punch Man season two, and I, I don't mean that in a good way. Roni Kenshin. Don't Google the author of this show. Next, we have Dead Mountain Deathplay, and I am so sorry, but 
this show was just not for me. I do want to clarify, I did get like six episodes into this one, probably like closer to seven, like eight or nine. So I really did try, but just didn't sit with me. Reincarnated as a vending machine. Trash goes in the trash. Know your fucking place, trash. Inspector, season two. I liked the first season, but not enough to watch the second season. Kamikatsu, working for God in a godless world. Only watch the show if you enjoy the phrase, the budget is hitting in an ironic way. Ragnar Crimson, the show came out at the same time as another edgy show that I was watching. This one got left by the wayside. Urusai Yatsura, it's based on a classic manga. The style is there, but oh my God, the main character Atsuru is just the worst and Loom is just the best. I don't like this dude, he's so annoying. All right, if you thought we sped through that one, we're definitely gonna speed through the next one because this is did not finish good ending. A lot of these are gonna be season twos. Consider this like an honorable mention list as well. Trigun Stampede, Ranking of Kings, season two. Scott Pilgrim Thanks Off, thank you Netflix. Apothecary Diaries, Dark Gathering. Now I've watched a lot of this show, but it just wasn't my shtick. It was scary. I did like some of the, some of the reveals in it some of the horror elements of it. Maybe if I was in high school, I'd be more into it. Revenger, I kind of forgot about this one, but I remember this, the premise being cool. So give that a shot if you like samurai anime. Nier Automata, this anime adaptation, RIP the delays. Ancient Mage's Bride season two. I watched the first season of that, really enjoyed it. Haven't gotten around to season two. Definitely check that out if you are into kind of Harry Potter-esque magic world. It's definitely a magical world. I just, the main character was just like kind of depressing. Birdie Wing season two that also aired a girls doing golf anime with beautiful animation. Haven't gotten around to finishing that one. Gundam Witch of Mercury season two. Again, haven't seen the first season, but I definitely talked about it in my last year list. In my notes, I wrote down Ron whatever forbidden deductions. And I, I know what show that is. I'm going to put it up there. Just didn't have time to watch it. One Piece, I watched the One Piece for a lot of the gear five hype. Shout out to uh, the One Piece. The one, one Piece is real. real. And the last one is the daggers in my heart or the dangers in my heart. I don't remember. People say it's a very good. So I might actually go back and finish that one. This is a good transition into our next tier in the tier list. Usually this is where I would put all the isekai that was just mid. In the middle we've got, it's an isekai, but this year, the genre has changed. Renta rom-coms. This is where all of the solid rom-coms went. Before we get into the next tier, guys, don't forget to like the video if you agree with anywhere that I placed your favorite show. The first one on our list is Masamune's Revenge R. It's been a while since that show came out. I watched it when it first aired, so seeing it come back was interesting, to say the least. Pacing kind of killed this one for me. I at least was able to finish this one. Loving Yamada at level 999. This is a very cute story about game or love, which probably makes it the most unrealistic show on this list. Horror Mia, The Broken Pieces. This show is actually a lot of the stuff that was cut in between scenes from the original Horry Mia show. So if you like Horry Mia, guess what? It's more of that. Don't tease me, Nagatoro season two. I think this show is underrated. I just think this show is cute. I love the interactions between Nagatoro and Senpai. Tomo-chan is a girl. Now, I remember liking this one a lot, and the ending of it actually kind of surprised me too. The last in this tier is going to be Tonikawa Fly Me to the Moon. This is the best rom-com for the rom-com tier, because in season one, episode one, they're just like, hey, what if we got married? And so this is a continuation of that. And it's just cute to see them talk through their problems, work stuff out. It's honestly pretty great. It's so relaxing. It's so fresh. So that is the rom-com tier. Up next, we have the watchable paradise tier. This is basically my C tier. I feel more positively about these shows than negatively. Digimon Adventure Zero Two, the beginning. People have always called Digimon a Pokemon ripoff. And with how forgettable the last few Pokemon movies have been, I agree. Kingdom of Ruin. This is the show with the guy who shot the gun and made the bullet so big, it destroyed a skyscraper. But man, this turned into some gory and twisted and just really freaking weird. It felt like they had so many bizarre twists in the first half that when the second half came around, there just wasn't much story to tell. Goblin Slayer season two. I just want to say, do you know how much better of a reputation Goblin Slayer would have had 
if they didn't immediately start season one with that scene, you know the scene I'm talking about. So if you like fantasy and you don't mind that it has the, the most out of pocket first episode, then I, I'm sure you'll probably like season two. The Berserk of Gluttony. This is just that time I got reincarnated as a slime, but it's edgy and his sword talks. The Eminence in the Shadow. Now the Eminence in the Shadow finished airing in the beginning of 2023, and season two did actually air later on in this year. So I will save most of my discussions for that show for when we do talk about season two. This was the best quote unquote edgy show. My Hero Academia season six, just it had the nerve to start off as really good and then just kind of get, it just locked itself away in pacing jail and threw away the key and said, hey, what if we were just like not good anymore? If you're five seasons already deep into My Hero Academia, you don't need me to tell you if, if it's gonna be good or not. You're, you're already this invested, you might as well watch it, you know? I feel like we'll be in a different place once we move past My Hero Academia as a society. We're done. We're not done. Daddy isn't done speaking. To Your Eternity season two. This first season was one of my favorite shows from its respective year when it came out. And unfortunately, this show took a page out of My Hero Academia's book and decided to have a war arc and just shit itself on the pacing. So overall, still good, but not as good as the first season. Konosuba Megumi. I wanted to like this show a lot more just because Konosuba is goaded, but man, like Megumi gets kind of boring when the only other character she has to bounce off of is Union. And although her little sister is adorable and Chomusuke is probably one of the greatest characters in fiction, they just couldn't save the show. I, I think Megumi is definitely a character that is better in small doses. The Way of the House Husband season two. If you watch the first season, you're gonna like the second season. It's more of the same stuff. This show is the definition of the budget is hitting. They get their mileage out of the voice actors though. The animation really is the only thing that's really holding the show back. Mushoku Tensei Episode Zero. This OVA shows some very important stuff that you're gonna need to watch before season two, but it's just an appetizer, so I can't like rank it too high. Helk. This show started off as a fun, lighthearted romp, but it quickly turned into a, a journey of deep reflection and loss. Helk is such a great character, but the pacing and the animation kind of leave a little bit to be desired. Dr. Stone New World. Last year, we got a special. This year, we have two cores of Dr. Stone. So I will save my Dr. Stone talks for the second half of the video, but that's mostly because I don't really remember a lot of the first core. Tokyo Revengers. I'm putting the Christmas Showdown arc that aired earlier in the year and the Tenjuku arc right next to each other. I swear, Tokyo Revengers is one of the best, worst anime I have ever seen. The show has such tragic and well-written characters that I just wish they made one of them the main characters instead. Because man, Takamichi is so dumb. Thankfully, the interpersonal drama between the side characters and the brutal beatdown still make this show pretty fun to watch, even if the pacing is kind of trash sometimes. But overall, I do still find myself looking forward to every episode of Tokyo Revengers. The best show in this tier has got to be Undead Murder Farce. To describe the show as horribly as I can, it's basically a Super Smash Brothers crossover, but instead of video game characters, it's characters from famous literature. The Phantom of the Opera, I'm talking Lupin the Phantom Thief, Sherlock freaking Holmes, Frankenstein's freaking monster. It has almost everything that I value in the show, especially when it comes to style. They do a lot of very well thought out transitions and visual imagery for breaking down things. It definitely utilizes all aspects of this visual medium. But as far as supernatural mystery shows go, this one is definitely high up there on my list. Now I've called this tier Attack on Top Tier. These are the shows I would have no problem recommending to anyone. The first show on this list is Hell's Paradise. This show was a wild ride. The fights were fun to follow. Character work was lacking in some areas, but overall it was, a, it was a pretty fun show and it easily would have been higher if there weren't as many good shows. Dr. Stone New World Part 2. The epic battle between the Kingdom of Science and the Petrification Kingdom was pretty freaking lit. Dr. Stone has always been at its best when you can kind of just turn your brain off and let the imaginary science do a lot of the hard carrying. Sometimes you have to toss logic out the window, just like he did with his latest album. Spy Family Season 2. I think I've said enough. Spy Family has always 
hit the right notes for me. For animation, comedy, feel goods, we have Anya on these very cute, wholesome and fun adventures that also has to be balanced with your killing 16 people with a paperclip. Eminence in the Shadow season two. This season just takes everything that I loved about all the setups and character motivations from season one are brought into season two and grow and expand and just cranks it up to 1500. Meanwhile, Sid has no idea what the fuck is going on with any of them. Rose has had more dramatic events happen to her in two seasons than Naruto has had in 500 episodes. Blue Lock. Blue Lock wrapped up its second quarter this year and it just goes to show you, anime can take any sport and make it interesting. I didn't know I wanted Soccer Squid Game. And so I saw Isagi get his rival out in the first episode. And I was like, damn, this is it. This is he. That's why he's the GOAT. Demon Slayer Swordsmith Village Arc. The show does what Demon Slayer does best and give us some good fight scenes, good animation, and way too many flashbacks. And you know, at this point, that's just the style of the show. Take it or leave it. Skip and Loafer. This show managed to escape the rom-com tier. And I gotta be honest, guys, I was not expecting this show about a small town girl moving to the big city to have such an impact on me when I first started watching it. I was literally like glued to my TV, just seeing the complexity of the characters and the relationships. It's all very nuanced and captivating. And it's just such a chill show. My home hero, a gripping crime drama about a father who accidentally kills his daughter's Yakuza's boyfriend. He uses his knowledge as a mystery writer to outsmart the Yakuza and like decompose the body and shit. It's honestly kind of insane. This show was intense through and through. Now the animation in this show is by no means incredible, but I really think it's just the story that carries the show for me because I, the 100 girlfriends who really, 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 really love you. This is the final boss of romance anime. Never before has no one decided to make a series so controversial, yet so brave enough to actually tackle giving this man 100 girlfriends. It's not hard to tell that this is one of the most unserious shows out there, so please do not take this show seriously at all. The only reason I know this show even exists was because of the manga panel that went viral of our main character Rentero listing off an entire two-page spread of just him talking about everything that he loves about his girlfriends. And that's when I realized, holy shit, they're gonna do it. They're gonna give him a hundred girlfriends. The Faraway Paladin season two. I think this show deserves an award for best D&D anime. This show sets up a pretty solid and well-defined threat pretty early on into the series and it executes it very well culminating in an extremely well done battle with a dragon. This is probably one of the most solid fantasies we've gotten in a while. Vinland Saga season two. While the slower pacing wasn't as serious of a bother to me as it was to some person, there were definitely some moments where I, I felt it, okay? I felt it, I'm with you guys, it was a little slow. But as far as the content, the messages, the visual storytelling, the music, the animation quality, the voice acting, amazing. Honestly, I'm very happy to continue this series. I look forward to everything that this show has to offer. Mushoku Tensei, Jobless Reincarnation, Season 2. As far as world and characters, Mushoku Tensei is unlike a lot of other shows. Yeah, the pacing was off for the first few episodes, but I'm here for the journeys and I'm here for the characters. And Rudy becoming something of a mentor to other students and gradually maturing and overcoming his erectile dysfunction. You're the real hero, Rudy. And finally, the last show, an Attack on Top tier. What else could it be besides Attack on Titan, the final chapters? I'm blocking these two into the same chunk because they are based, it's just two movies slapped together. And personally, I do like the first special a little better than the second one, but the first special, just the intro scene, just sends chills down my spine. And the credits of the final special, just the ending with the, the time lapse. So I still think about that to this very day. Overall, Attack on Titan easily in my top 10 of all time. Don't forget to like this video if you agree with where I placed your favorite anime. This is it, the best of the best, my top, 10 favorite anime of 2023, also known as Jujutsu Kaisen. Only a few shows are still airing as we speak, so I want to knock out the first two out of three first. Number 10, Undead Unluck. 
this show has gone, I feel like, completely unnoticed. I feel like the fact that it's animated by the guys who did JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and Fire Force means at the very least you can expect the fights to pop off the screen and the sound design to be crispier than fresh baked pie. I want you to take that crispy pie. I want you to put it in a cupboard and lock it and let it rot and wither away and fade into obscurity because that is exactly what Disney is doing with Undead Unluck. I just think one of Shonen Jump's newest golden boys deserves a little bit more respect. Number nine, Shangri-La Frontier. Have you ever played so many games of Tetris that pretty soon everything in your life starts to look like stackable blocks? Now imagine you play so many trashy, buggy, and glitchy video games that when it comes time for you to play a real game, you stumble across a god tier boss, get your shit kicked in, and then unlock a unique scenario that literally, I mean literally, zero players have ever seen. This show just makes you want a game, and I respect that. Number eight, the boy and the heron. Those Ghibli boys know how to cook up a good fucking movie. I, I feel like it's impossible for anyone's first Ghibli movie in theaters to not be at the top of their list. You don't need me to tell you that this is a breathtaking, excellent adventure. Number seven, Kaguya-sama Love is War. The final kiss that never ends. This is the movie length finale of Kaguya-sama Love is War. I was very happy with the way our character dynamics ended in the last season, and I think there was definitely a lot of room for more growth and more stories to tell. But if it is the end, I do think things ended in a very nice way. Number six, Zom 100. Bucket list of the dead. I would like to personally take a moment to thank every animator at Bug Films who made this show possible. The whole premise of this anime is that a zombie apocalypse frees our main character from the shackles of his job, where he is overworked, underpaid, emotionally damaged, and treated like sleep is a luxury that simply cannot be afforded. That's the first episode, and these guys are sitting here having to do this actually behind the scenes. This is their actual life. They didn't even have the opening song done until episode nine. How many shows have you known that haven't had a fully animated opening day one? I think this show and the production breakdown needs to be studied, especially with how ironic it is. You think this is funny? In a cosmic sort of way, yes. There are a lot of talented animators on that show, and I think the show just deserves a lot of recognition. It deserves your respect. It deserves your attention. And most of all, it deserves your love. So please support this studio. Speaking of bad practices, number five, Heavenly Delusion. I guess I have to call it Tengoku Daimyo or whatever the fuck. I can't really talk about this show because it is it's very dark. It's just something that you kind of have to give it like a couple episodes to really get into the groove of. Anybody who is okay with various degrees of content severity will be able to appreciate the dual stories being told, the layers of foreshadowing, the detailed plot, the atmosphere and unique set pieces. And I, I promise you, this show will live in your head rent free. Disney has picked up these shows for licensing in America, and I'm gonna show them on screen. This show is violent for sure. This show is violent for sure. This show is violent for sure, and I know for a fact Tengoku Daimyo is violent and does not have very family-friendly content at all. So why is Disney buying up these shows? Why is Disney buying Tokyo Revengers, the show where people regularly get the shit kicked out of them? It doesn't make sense. Can you guys just like let a normal company handle these shows? And also, Heavenly Delusion? I mean, everybody calls it Heavenly Delusion. That's what it's been called. Go look at the manga. The manga is called Heavenly Delusion in English. So why are you bringing it over and uploading it onto your series as Tengoku Daimkyo? Why? Oh, because it has heaven in the title. So why did you buy it? Why did you buy the show that you knew you were gonna have to censor? Why? And it's gonna, it's violent too. What are you doing? Why are you buying this show? Why couldn't you buy Skip and Loafer? What business does Bleach have doing on a fucking Disney channel? And you're buying the show that has the infamous you smell like semen line? Huh? Is that what you want, Disney? Disney wants you to, to watch shows about people who smell like cum? Number four, Oshinoko. First off, let me say, if your first episode is over an hour long, that's a feature-length film. I'm in, you got me, but what's that? So you've got a murder mystery 
drenched in the entertainment industry, mixed in with adults reincarnated by death as children whose mother is murdered in front of them? Okay, just for your dedication to realism in the industry and the environments that you're, you're putting your, your characters in, I respect it. Before we get into our top three anime of 2023, if you made it this far into the video, don't forget to leave a comment what your top three anime of 2023 were. And while you're here, like the video. Number three, Jujutsu Kaisen season two. Incredible, just incredible. This show has the best fight scenes of the year, hands down. But if you know me, you know action and characters are two sides of the same coin for me. And the show with the best characters has to be number two, Free Rend, Beyond Journey's End. Free Rend reminds us what it means to be alive, all the little things that we miss in life and take for granted. The people we know and what we don't know about them are all a part of the journey of life and taking the time to understand that is one of the first steps to really understanding life. And it also helps that the first episode is technically the first four episodes and you know I love a good movie length episode. That's just like an indicative sign of quality for me. If your show starts with an hour long episode or two hours in this case, it's gonna be a good show. I'm sorry, that's, that's just how it is. If you do end up watching the show, my number two favorite show of the year. Try watching it in batches of like four episodes, just as an experiment. I wanna see if the pacing is maybe a little better that way. Try that and let me know in the comments down below. Since the show is technically airing, I can't put it at the top of my list. So I wanna take the show that blended the best action and characters better than Freerun and Jujutsu Kaisen using one simple trick, story. My favorite anime of 2023 was hands down Pluto. Pluto was such a moving experience. I could easily see myself going back to this show in the near future, and I probably will. I will probably force someone to watch this show with me very soon. The show takes the final arc of Astro Boy, critically acclaimed manga, and the first serialized anime, and adapts it into a murder mystery at the expert hands of Naoki Urasawa, the author of Monster, and honestly, I've been putting off watching Monster, but after watching Pluto, I'm going to watch it because so many people have said so many good things about it. I don't know why I've been putting it off, especially after seeing the discussions that this show has with itself regarding war, happiness, hatred. This just proves a man can really master his craft. I mean, at its heart, you gotta, you gotta think about this, right? It's an AI story written in the 60s about the far future that was readapted in the early aughts and still somehow feels timeless. It's aged amazingly well. If you take away one show on this list to watch, please let it be Pluto. And this isn't a problem with the show. I don't understand Netflix. I just don't understand why they had to make this show eight hour long episodes. That's basically just 24 episodes. That's, that's just 24 episodes. Hey, Blue Eyed Samurai, another show that I wanted to watch but couldn't because it's eight hour long episodes. Netflix, please stop doing batch releases. It killed JoJo's. The hype for it was just totally dead. Now imagine this show, Pluto, came out eight weeks, eight hour long episodes. People feel like they're watching a movie every week. As the murder mystery unfolds, people are dying, suspects lists are closing in, things are getting more and more suspense, and you have people sitting on that, digesting that, that hour of content every week, eight weeks in a row, coming back for more to seeing how the story unfolds and where the characters will end up, who is going to die next, what revelations will be revealed. I, I watch some shows and I sit here eagerly waiting for the next episode, like, oh my God, Tuesday can't come here faster. I can't wait to watch Oshino Go. But Netflix just says, nah, fuck it. Fuck you. Just drop it all at the same time. Endless trash. This show could have been so much more popular. So many people should have watched the shows. If I learned anything this year, it's that streaming services are kind of destroying anime. Whether it's good shows being gobbled up by licensors who have no idea what they're doing with them and don't even want them, or whether it's amazing, incredible art just being held in jail and dropped into the ether randomly. And now people got to be, oh, sorry, I gotta go spend eight hours to dedicate to this show. And like Netflix was already releasing Vinland Saga weekly. They finally started releasing shows weekly with like Comey Can't Communicate. That's one decent show. Glad you guys did Vinland Saga weekly, but you guys take like actual masterpieces. Like Pluto is genuinely one of the best shows that I've seen. That show would be very emotional. And I'm very passionate about 
getting good art to people to see and enjoy and ask themselves questions and struggle with the material. And I'm asking myself the question, why is Netflix shooting themselves in the foot? This is a murder mystery. You don't want to just binge through a murder mystery. You want to be able to sit on it. You want to be able to enjoy it. You don't want to feel like it's a task or a chore to sit through eight hour episodes. It's just like Netflix is making decisions specifically just to piss me off. But hey, that's my list. What did you guys think? Do you guys have any disagreements? Do you think any shows should be higher? Do you think any shows should be lower? Do you have any thoughts on Pluto and the eight hour debate? I would love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Let me know your top 10 shows of 2023. If you wanna see 2022's list, you can find a link right here. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Fully Cooly Grunge. More like Fully Cooly Grown. Oh no, that's not making it. <laughs>